Hey, what's up everyone? Morning, Carson here. And today we're going to be going over your food pyramid and what's going to be most important to helping you in your athletic performance. And we're going to start the video right now. Okay, so this is going to be a super important topic just because I do think it's something that is really not recognized as much, which is the nutrition side of being able to perform as an athlete. And, you know, I do think for me personally, one of the reasons why I've been able to stay healthy and in good shape for a long period of time is because of the dietary habits that really have been passed down to me from my parents and more specifically my dad, who is also a football coach, really into nutrition and has really helped me in being able to understand exactly what I should be putting into my body and what not to be putting into my body in order to be able to sustain myself from a high level performance perspective. Now, what we're going to start off with is going to be the USDA, the United States Drug Administration's, what their food pyramid is, and it's really directly linked to the FDA as well, just because it, I, in my opinion, is such a disgrace to athletes and what they want to be able to do. And I think one of the reasons why, you know, over time here, starting from, you know, the late 90s into, you know, the late 2017, 2019, that's when they have the most updated information is that our obesity rate in the United States has continued to increase. And it's because of what they are putting out here with the food pyramid. And this is why it's really important to check your facts, right? You want to make sure that you're getting the best quality information. And that's really why I wanted to make this video, because I just think it's just so disgraceful that this is the actual information that they put out for you to follow to actually improve in your health. Like I don't understand how this could actually end up benefiting you in any way, especially if you're an athlete who is putting a lot of time into improving their ability to perform at a athletic standpoint. So we're going to go ahead and hop into the, the pyramid here. And what stands out, right, if we look at it and how the, the food pyramid works, is that at the bottom, it's what we should be eating the most of, right? According to this, and this is why we need to be careful where we get our facts from, it's you should be eating six to 11 servings of bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. Obviously, there are lobbyists that are impacting this food pyramid because we all know that we should not be having the most amount of bread, cereal, rice, and pasta in order to improve our performance, right? But this is what the Drug Administration puts out, which also makes it so this is what is pushed more so in grocery stores, commercials, everything is more towards how this ends up being healthy somehow. Second is fruits and vegetables. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing to have fruits and vegetables. We obviously want to be able to have those three to five servings and then two to three servings. This is obviously per day of milk, yogurt, and cheese. And then also two to three servings of meat, poultry, fish, dry beans, eggs, and nuts. And then the least amount of fats and oils. And, and why I really have a problem with that is just because fats are super important for you to be able to utilize for energy, right? So we have to be able to have a high fat diet in order to really perform at a high level because that ends up being a big source of energy. Fat and carbs obviously end up being a big, you know, two main things. And then what meat and protein end up doing for us is being able to allow our muscles to rebuild and recover. Bread, cereal, that really doesn't do very much for us overall uh, in terms of any type of benefit. So I'm going to scroll down. This is going to be the paleo pyramid, right? So this is going to be obviously different in how they, they set it up. It's not as easy to just be able to go through this, but we see that the most important thing is water. I love that, right? Like let's obviously we need more water. So why, why did the USDA not have any type of water consumption? You know, like they put milk in here for two to three servings, but didn't even add water is something that is something that's super important. So that's why a lot of people dehydrated. And again, you know, medical bills on average for people are, are skyrocketing year after year. Um, you know, heart disease is becoming a bigger issue. Obesity in general is becoming a bigger, bigger an issue. And the main reason is, is because again, lobbyists are paying for what ends up being the food pyramid that is pushed out to us in our school education. So now everybody thinks that it's okay to be eating these foods that just end up making us overweight and sluggish and not able to perform so we need water and then the two big things after that you know the two foundational uh, essentials to a healthy diet says right here fats and oils meats and proteins right so basically switching this entire thing upside down where you know what the usda said was having mostly grains legumes sugar you know and, and 
making that the big priority. They're basically just saying avoid those, don't have those, you know, basically ever. Um, mostly instead, which is at the top of the pyramid, is have meats and proteins and fats and oils, right? And then also be able to have some of these as well. And it kind of works its way up. Vegetables, leafy greens, nuts and seeds, fruits and berries, starchy vegetables, and then dairy uh, is something that, you know, you don't need a ton of, something that, you know, you can utilize to get some vitamin C, but it's not a super critical part. So again, that is for your paleo pyramid. We're going to just go a few different pyramids and then I'll, I'll go over what I would recommend. The zone is really the one that I recommend. It's the one that I follow probably the most. And it says, again, water is the most important thing that we need. Love it. I think that's super important. Then fruits and vegetables. They're always high on making sure that you have plenty of fruits and vegetables. And essentially, we, I made a video about this before, where if we break down the actual you know, daily intake, you want to be at about 60% of you know, carbs. Fruits and vegetables would be considered like more simple carbs. Complex carbs are going to be more of the breads and grains and starches, the things that are harder to digest. We want the simple carbs because they're very, very easy to digest for our body, uh, which makes it so they're good for us. And then we want the low fat protein. So, you know, stuff like turkey and fish, you know, cheese is also something that could be good. You know, I, I definitely love red meat, so I don't want to say that I don't eat red meat, but I just don't eat it near as much as I eat chicken, um, you know, fish, you know, salmon, uh, scallops. You know things like that i i'm always eating seafood lobster even i'll, I'll eat that a good amount uh, just because it, it has some such high amount of protein in it and such great protein as well um, and then again i eat chicken a lot as uh, with that the next thing is going to be the monounsaturated fats those are going to be you know avocados and, and tree nuts and uh, healthy tops of oils and things like that you know olive oil would be a example of, of a healthy oil or avocado oil just the oils that come from really good positive fats right so an olive would be considered a fat avocado would be considered a fat oils that come from that vegetable oil is not a great option for for your uh, cooking necessities and then use sparingly breads grains starches and pasta so obviously the zone food pyramid is not getting paid by grain lobbyists which is why they do not say it is important to be able to eat you know a lot of that this one is going to be the mediterranean diet and some of this ends up being um taken from the the zone diet um some of it ends up not being you know obviously this one is interesting just because it says most importantly is be physically active right and having a social life and having meals with other people and not being on on your own all the time that ends up being an important part of you know your ability to stay healthy also says that wine is a good option which i'm not totally opposed to and then also drink a lot of water so you know making sure that you drink water and then in terms of the foods you know fruit fruits vegetables grains mostly whole grains right so they're not saying to, to eat like white bread and things like that um you know but they are on the side of more you know grainy diets but there's a lot of color in there as well there's a little bit of bread but a lot of you know usually oranges avocados tomatoes grapes you know a lot of things that are really good from a, a carb perspective that's probably olive oil or, or supposed to be depicting olive oil and then we have uh, fish and seafood as being the primary source of protein you know i'm not a big muscle fan but you know obviously like i just said i, I love all the fish and then next is going to be the you know poultry so you know eggs cheese turkeys on here but chicken would be considered obviously it's going to be poultry so that's on there as well and then yogurt i love to have some high protein yogurt as well great for your digestive system and then last is going to be you know the red meats and any types of sweets and sugars and stuff like that so you know those are going to be better options for you to be able to follow you know mediterranean diet zone diet those are going to be two ones that i that i definitely would recommend you know obviously even doing something like paleo is going to be better than what our government is pushing for us to utilize and follow in order to help us out right and i would definitely say stay away from what is typically pushed onto us and really staying more towards the things that are going to end up being the easiest for our body to digest that makes it so then we can utilize it for energy again things like breads and pastas just end up being stuck in our systems until we end up just flushing them out we can use a little bit of it for nutrients but for the most part it's really difficult for our body to digest and, and it takes more time for it to actually go through our body so it's not as effectively utilized as energy you know it can be utilized for energy and if you're you know going through 
typically have maybe two or three practices or if you have you know a couple games back to back or you're having a weekend tournament soccer tournament lacrosse tournament um, even football you know i know you guys have some some then that's where you know having some pasta before that wouldn't be bad i wouldn't recommend it like the day before a game i know some people say you should have a bunch of pasta before games i wouldn't recommend that you can maybe have you know a little bit of it if you really are struggling from an energy perspective uh, but the only time that i'd recommend that is really if you're gonna have like a big weekend tournament where you're gonna need some energy but for the most part you know at least for me and i work out on a daily basis you know not two or three times a day i, I almost never eat bread i do have um, you know, like quinoa is more of the rice that I have and brown, brown rice. I definitely don't have very much like white rice very often. Uh, and then also don't have very much noodles very often. Never eat crackers or anything like that. Um, and, and I still maintain, you know, I'm supposed to just to be able to maintain my weight. I have to at 175, uh, I should be eating 3,400 calories per day. So it is a good amount of food that I need to be eating, but I also want to be able to utilize all of that nutrients for positive growth. I don't want to be having empty calories, which a lot of this bottom serving is, or just what's considered empty calories, which are just not going to help you in your performance. They're only going to slow you down, only going to make you bigger, only going to make it so you have to work harder in order to get to the same result. So I'm all about efficiency. I want to eat a great diet to be able to keep that efficiency. So I hope this helps, guys. I'm really disappointed when I saw that this is what our food pyramid is and what is pushed towards people to be able to sustain a healthy living because it's just not the facts and something that we want to stay away from. Again, if you guys want to take some screenshots or whatever, paleo diet, zone diet, and Mediterranean diet are all going to be much better options for you in terms of being able to stay healthy and perform at a high level. So thanks for watching. If you guys want to check out any of our programs down below, I would highly recommend it. I'm more on the side of training. Um, I don't, I do nutrition. You can do get nutrition in, in my programs because I'm big on fitness overall and, and making sure that you are, are healthy. Um, but you know, more of my programs are going to go into running faster, throwing the ball further, just being able to be healthy overall. I do have a lot of custom programs as well, but you can check all that out in the description. And then also send me an email if you have any questions about any of the stuff that we talked about or how we could help you in living a healthier lifestyle. If you are somebody that is trying to lose weight and following the food pyramid and would like to get some guidance, I'd be happy to help you out in not only getting you some nutritional guidance, but also being able to get you on some type of fitness routine that could really end up making a big positive difference in improving your body size and making this so you end up being a lot more fit overall and a lot of it will end up probably having to do with some sprinting stuff some running stuff some jumping stuff some things that are very fundamental for our body to be able to do and if you haven't done those for a long time feel uncomfortable with it then you know that's fine i do do a lot of stuff that goes into the actual specific mechanics of being able to do any type of movement correctly so we'll start off with like walking some jogging even some running um, just to be able to get a fundamental understanding of what it is that we need to work on in the technique to make sure that you're able to do that in a healthy manner. So I don't want you to just start going from, you know, zero to 100 mile an hour, you know, sprinting 100%. We want to be able to build you up to make it so you can end up sprinting again, jumping again, just feeling a, a healthier version of yourself. And that's what doing this video is all about, is just to help you guys in maintaining good, positive health. So as always, thanks for watching. Click that thumbs up if this has been beneficial for you. That really helps us out a ton. And as always, talk to you soon.